Hey everyone, Josh with Severe Weather and welcome to my YouTube channel. We're going to talk about some major changes and significant winter storms on tap as we head towards next week. Appreciate you guys joining me. Sorry, I've been kind of AWOL for a little while due to travel and some sickness, but we're getting better here as the day goes on and uh, excited to share with you guys what could be a very substantial storm here next week for portions of the central and eastern United States. Uh, right now, models are now keying in on what should be a very quickly developing East Coast storm, likely a bomb cyclone. The pressure is expected to drop, and this could bring us some substantial snowfall uh, to portions of the Plains, the Ohio Valley, and in particular, the Northeast, New England, and Atlantic Canada once again, as the storm track favors a significant storm, and that's going to follow with additional winter storm threats. So despite the quieter weather pattern we're in this week, Things are going to very quickly change as we head to next week. So I want to show you guys where things are originating. Uh, we had this major storm that moved from California into the central U.S. It's taking a northern track, sending mild air up with it. And we're actually going to see maybe a risk of a few thunderstorms as we get to tomorrow in parts of Wisconsin, Illinois, and Iowa. Uh, that will follow with another storm getting set to move into the western United States kind of in two pieces. And as those two start to phase as they head into the eastern U.S. early next week, um, there's a decent chance right now from what I'm seeing on the models that things are going to develop very quickly into a rapidly strengthening storm as it exits stage east here, stage right over the eastern U.S. Here's a look at where things are currently. Very quiet weather across the east, across the Gulf states. Our big storm that hammered California Sunday and Monday is now kind of shearing out into the central and northern plains. Winter weather expected today and tonight over portions of the Rockies. And then here's our next storm system coming in two pieces, moving into Northern California tonight, followed by a bigger piece coming in behind it. And I'm not forgetting about you guys in the Caribbean. Usually I talk about you during hurricane season, but some nasty rain that affected Puerto Rico is heading towards the islands today as we do have a storm system that's digging southeastward into this portion of the world here. So very nasty weather for some of us. The eastern U.S. is very quiet right now on our hazards map. All the weather is out west. We still do have flood watches in effect in Southern Cal. Winter storm warnings, uh, uh, speckling portions of the west here. Pink indicates the warnings and uh, purple indicates advisories uh, and watches. Winter storm, I think uh, winter weather advisories. That's right. Um, so we are active in the west, but quiet in the east for the time being. Now, as we advance this forward, we're going to see our storm in the west. Uh, tracking northeastward into the northern plains. And instead of snow in Minnesota, we're talking about rain, maybe even a few thunderstorms over parts of Wisconsin here later tomorrow into tomorrow night. And rain will advance onto the north side of Lake Superior. So an unusually warm system for this time of the year as we are right at the midpoint of winter. But there is colder air lurking behind this storm system. It's going to move away by the weekend. We are going to have some rain and some thunderstorms over parts of the south, but it will follow with a push of colder air set to drop down into the southwestern United States. A pretty big trough here, and I'll show you in a little bit what that looks like. And um, that is going to send a storm system from coast to coast. It'll gather some cold air over the front range of the Rockies into New Mexico, West Texas, and western Oklahoma on Sunday. It'll pick up some Gulf moisture, and then it's going to ride up into the mid-Atlantic states and northeast. And a second piece of energy is going to drop down into Canada. And the two are looking like they're going to try to phase together here as the storm exits on Tuesday. That will enhance our precipitation rates and could lead to a significant winter storm here for the Northeast as we head towards Tuesday of next week. Now we're talking about six days out. Details on this are going to change. I have seen this happen a million times, uh, but there is now cold air entering the picture behind our strengthening storm system. And this will likely uh, set the stage for a big storm somewhere in the Northeast. And the big question mark is, is that gonna be for the coastal cities? Is it gonna be farther inland? Or is it gonna be for Eastern New England only? And I don't yet have the answer to that. The GFS model is also on board. Let me load the 12Z for you guys here. This is pivotalweather.com. It's on board, but it has a different track. Uh, in fact, it brings a low pressure system up to the uh, area of Morgantown, Pittsburgh, Wheeling, West Virginia, and then brings a secondary low onto Long Island, meaning we're going to be dealing with rain in the big cities on Tuesday, but heavy snow inland. And it does show this storm system strengthening and battering eastern New England and Atlantic Canada on the way out. And this could provide some extreme amounts of snow to parts of Atlantic Canada that just got buried here uh, a few days ago uh, with the storm that moved through. 
Uh, we see on the Canadian model some agreement as well, but obviously differences in the details. Here is a look at our storm gathering strength on Sunday over the Texas region. Some cold air in place will lead to some snow in the southern plains uh, and into the central plains by Sunday night, Monday morning. Um, this track is less wintry for the Ohio River Valley, more so for the Great Lakes. Uh, but same deal, we're looking at low pressure strengthening near the coast, bringing excessive amounts of rain uh, to Long Island and southern New England and very heavy snow here as the storm deepens over portions of Maine. And I'm going to break this down for you guys a little bit more, uh, but it appears that the cold air is meeting up with our storm at the right time. Here is a look at a comparison of the model showing us where the storm is going to be next Tuesday morning. And I just want to show this to you guys to give you an idea of, of the possibilities of what we're dealing with here. Uh, so here's a look at the uh, UK MET model. It has uh, strengthening low pressure here east of Maryland. Uh, here is a look at the European, kind of in the same place. We see the buildup of northeasterly flow, uh, sending moisture into this storm from the northeastern side. So a typical coastal low here, nothing unusual. Uh, this is the Canadian model. It is weaker, uh, but does have low pressure just south of Long Island in the five boroughs. Uh, here's the Actually, that was the uh, Canadian. Here's a GFS and it's farther offshore, but it does have the same kind of idea in place here that low pressure will form just off the Jersey and Delaware shore. Uh, and here's the German icon model, which has the low not quite transferring yet to the coast, but beginning to take shape here near Atlantic City. Fast forward here 12 hours and we have a storm system that is very quickly intensifying and some uncertainty, as you might imagine, with this being six days away. But some decent agreement now that this is going to be a major storm, a significant East Coast storm. We could even call it a nor'easter potentially here. This is the GFS model, uh, and this would be 7 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday. So when you're watching this, we're talking about six days in the future. 975 millibar and strengthening low pressure system near Cape Cod. Um, the Icon German model, a little bit weaker, a little farther offshore, but has that deepening low pressure system. Uh, the European is too far offshore to uh, bring rain to the big cities. This would actually mean some snow because it's farther offshore, allowing the cold air to drop down. This is the outlier. This was the earlier run of the European. I don't quite yet have this afternoon's run, but I suspect it may correct. And I could be completely wrong. I don't know. I can't predict what's not out there yet um, as far as forecast models go. But you can see it's got a powerful storm off of the northeast coast. And then the Canadian has a 956 millibar low. That is a crusher uh, with extreme amounts of wind for coastal New England, not to mention extreme amounts of precipitation on the backside of our storm. So on the way out, it's burning the bridge behind it. It's bringing in the moisture. Uh, it is likely going to be a major storm. I just don't know exactly yet who's going to see the snow rain line, who's going to get the heaviest of snow, who's going to get the strongest wind. But you definitely need to be on the lookout for this storm as it will be a potential newsmaker. Now, here are the ingredients that go into it. This is the upper level pattern. And right now, you see we have an upper level low that is moving through California here and another piece of energy right behind it dropping down into coastal Oregon. Um, that will combine into one system. Now, there isn't a lot of cold air with this. You can see all these brighter colors indicating some ridging aloft here for the end of the week. So we have kind of one independent storm, but not really a, a strong feed of cold air. Now, as we head into next week, there's another piece of energy that's going to ride up and over this ridge uh, that's over Alaska. That's going to dive into Western Canada, and that is going to supply the change over to some colder weather. What we need to see happen is these two need to phase together for this to really be a big storm. Now, take a look here at as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday, we see um, we see uh, the phasing going on, not from this Western system, but from a piece of the polar vortex that drops down into Quebec and James Bay here. So this is a very, very favorable spot to see this feed of cold weather, this strengthening trough, basically pick up the heels of our first feature. And that's gonna allow this interaction where we do have a quickly deepening storm. This is a classic setup for a nor'easter to form as these two pieces of energy right here and right here start to face together here next Tuesday evening. And then we see much colder air coming in. And after this storm system, Valentine's Day and on, the uh, continued push of cold air continues here. Here's the polar vortex over the Hudson Bay. We see pieces of it dropping down into the Northeast next weekend and then beyond into President's Day. And overall, much of the country is going to be well below average, a big flip in what's coming here, um, and which is better news for California as well. 
um, in that we're going to shut off kind of that atmospheric river push that we've had here in the California. Uh, but it is going to lead to uh, more unsettled weather in the Northeast and Great Lakes, likely some higher chances for snow as well, as we have ridging starting to take over here across both Greenland. Um, this is a negative NAO block over Greenland, as well as over Western Canada and Alaska. That is positive PNA. And those are two big ingredients to get some winter weather in portions of the Eastern United States. Farther south to the Gulf Coast, to the Southeast, there are better chances out of this, but there are no guarantees that we are going to see winter weather. So that is what I want to keep you guys kind of kind of in mind for here. As we head into next week, you see the warm air in place here very quickly drop off and much cooler weather returns to much of the country except the upper Great Lakes and the West Coast here. This is next week and we're several degrees below average. And as we round out the month of February, it remains below average across much of the central and eastern U.S. We do get some warming across eastern Canada. That doesn't necessarily mean you guys aren't going to get snow up there. It just means it won't be as cold with respect to average. So that's a look at what we're going to see here in the future. In the shorter term, here's our storm over the Rockies and Plains. This is tomorrow morning. We see some rain showers moving up towards Duluth into parts of Ontario. We may see a couple of pop-up storms here, maybe a little bit of hail over parts of Wisconsin. Not a big severe weather setup by any stretch as we're shut off from what's coming out of the Gulf. Uh, but you do see this storm spinning over the Great Lakes. Cold air follows behind it and a very quiet end to the week here across much of the Southern and Eastern United States. It will moisten up. We'll see clouds building and some rain is in the forecast as we get to Saturday over places like the Tennessee Valley, parts of Northeast Texas, eventually heading into the Carolinas. Uh, but that storm track is gonna be a lot quieter than the one we saw here back on Sunday and Monday that produced severe weather down South. So that's the good news for us. All right, I wanna show you guys uh, some snow potential here. And again, this is gonna change, uh, but you can see here um, heading into next Tuesday, a pretty decent chance of seeing at least an inch of snow across New England over Western and Central PA, West Virginia, and into the mountains of Tennessee and North Carolina. A smaller chance over the Great Lakes, but there is a chance nonetheless. Uh, here's a look at the model comparison of the first part of the storm. This is uh, Sunday into Monday, a few inches possible over New Mexico, over into Oklahoma and central Missouri. This is the GFS, the icons a little farther north towards Kansas City, um, the European farther south down towards the Ozarks region, even down into Oklahoma City. Uh, the Canadian um, gets the storm going a little bit later, but has some snow around St. Louis. And here's the GFS model, kind of a, a run in between all of them. Now, moving farther east, um, a little bit farther off in time, this is Monday, we see a few inches possible across the central part of Illinois, northwest Indiana on the GFS. The icon a little farther north and west, closer to Chicago. Uh, the European, though, uh, not really cranking things out here yet in the Midwest. Uh, it's going to wait until after this time frame. Uh, the Canadian model says could be a decent storm over northern Indiana and into eastern parts of Michigan, maybe far northwest Ohio as well. Uh, and then back to the GFS model here. Now, moving farther to the east, you can see some bigger totals as our storm begins to phase and deepen over New England. Now, I'm going to show you some pretty decent differences here, and this would be on Tuesday uh, into Tuesday evening. Uh, widespread potential for a foot or more of snow, uh, according to the GFS, but it keeps most of this to the north of I-95, Boston being the exception here. Uh, but big snow potentially over central and eastern parts of New England. And then later on, that should carry into New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, where we could be talking maybe over 25 centimeters or um, yeah, over 25 centimeters of snow, so over a foot of snow, basically. Here's the icon model, and uh, you can see um, a little bit farther north at the front end of this storm, but still has big time snow. But uh, Boston kind of getting excluded from the heaviest part of this. It would be a mix in Boston, but a big snowfall over northern New England and upstate New York. Uh, the earlier European, though, looked a lot better here for southern New England, New York City, maybe even Philly and New Jersey. This is an outlier, though. And then here's a Canadian model, and this is an extreme as it's got the strongest low pressure on the map here as we get to Tuesday evening. And this shows us what could be a, potentially a blizzard for parts of Maine, New Hampshire, uh, eastern parts of Vermont and New Brunswick. Again, this is just six days out. It will probably change, but the fact that the models are all showing a decent storm that is strengthening quickly on the way out uh, gives me some more confidence in that we're going to have a pretty substantial storm here early next week. I'm going to give you guys more updates uh, as we get closer to the event. I'm going to try to do this pretty much every day, probably not tomorrow, 
as I'm still kind of getting over things, but I do appreciate your time. If you enjoyed this video, please consider becoming a subscriber and sharing with your friends as I continue to update you guys on major weather patterns. Uh, I thank you for your time today, and I give all the glory to God who has given me the strength today, especially to get on YouTube again. Um, I thank God for everything. Uh, Psalm 73, uh, 28 says, but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. And that is what drives me to do what I do every day. It is knowing that God is providing for me that I can bless you guys and other folks in my life, and that I can share the good news with you. Um, having said that, if you're going through a challenging time, and I know a lot of us are, I'm happy to pray for you. Uh, feel free to list those prayer requests, spoken or unspoken, and I will spend some time praying for you as well. I really appreciate your time today. I hope you guys have a great Wednesday. And uh, as always, um, I am going to do my best to get back in front of the camera here soon. Take care.